and welcome, welcome to, to our, our kitchen. kitchen. I'm the penguin. And I'm the chef. That's Pooty Doo. Penguin chef and Pooty Doo too. And he just something. He's a big turd. <laughs> so we want to welcome you to another Fair Food Sunday. Right. So we've been trying to make a few things that we get from the fair from time to time, and we've made them at home before too over yeah. the years. Our boys used to love these when I make them. Yeah. So we're, we're just trying to bring you guys some shortcuts in our little fair food fun, fantastic little today, world. Today we're gonna make baby elephant ears. Oh, the elephant. <laughs> Ain't it food? Nobody has to guess what that is. I wear multiple. I wear multiple and, costumes. And these, these are really simple to make. Uh, I've, I've been making them like 30 years. When the kids were here, I used to have to buy like three cans of biscuits because biscuits is the main ingredient in it. <laughs> Since it's just me and her, we can just use one can. So yeah, because the kids would wipe out a can a piece. But, now I will say that if you guys ever want to see us make the authentic elephant ears. Yeah, we can then I have that recipe too, but it quite you know, it requires using some yeast and stuff like that. But we would be more than happy to show you guys how to make an authentic elephant ear. But the chef's method, this easy method right here, you're still gonna get the same texture, yeah. the same flavor, and it's all how you tweak it up. So take it, chef. Well, like you know, when you go to the fairs and carnivals. Unless you ask for something different, it's always cinnamon and sugar. Sometimes they butter them and put cinnamon and sugar. But at home, you can mix it up a lot. So some of these, I'm going to do the traditional way. I'm going to butter them and put cinnamon and sugar on them. A couple of them, I'm just going to do with some jam. And then we're going to dust them with some powdered sugar. Like I said, try it our way. If you like it, you can use it that way or you can change it up. The jams I'm using, I got some different ones here. We got, these are one of those... Uh, Christmas. Uh, yeah, it was in one of our. Um, yeah, now I can't even think of it. What do you call it? You guys Advent. know what I mean. Advent calendars. Advent calendars. Yeah. From Christmas time. I've never had this kind before. This is. It's the Bonamon Bon Maman um, uh, flavored jams. Purple fry cinnamon spread. We're gonna try that one on one. And the other one is raspberry red currant. I've had that before. That's really good. His Candy Fox had one, and I asked her where she got hers from, and she said she told me where she got it from and what company it was by. And now they sell these, the bigger jars, at Walmart, but they're kind of very pricey. Yeah. But when you go to the festival and the fairs, you can get other toppings on your elephant ears a yeah. lot of times. Sometimes, yeah. But they charge you an arm and a leg. Yeah, this last one we just at, they didn't have anything but cinnamon and sugar. I look, that's all I had. Yeah. Well, I'll get you guys started on this here in a minute. I'm enjoying my tea because I've been outside working and going to get food down. Otherwise, he'll be trying to eat everything on the table I'm making. So we'll be right back. Hey, Pat. And Pat joined us in the Didn't give me kiss. kitchen here. His name's Gabriel, but we call him Putt a Putt for Putts. Yes. You see Sandy in the background coming down the stairs. <laughs> Okay, here's everything we're going to need to make those baby elephant ears. I got flour. You don't need much, just a little bit of flour. Cooking oil, which I already have in my skillet now. Uh, put between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch of oil to start with. You might have to add a little more after. Uh, like I said, if you're going to mix it up like I am, you can get your favorite jam or jelly out. I got uh, cinnamon sugar already blended together. Going to need some butter and a dish to microwave that in. I got powdered sugar for those jelly jam ones. I got my can of jumbo size biscuits and again we got the walmart brand you can use any brand you want taste this the same i got a little spreader here for the jam brush brush the butter on with my baby rolling pin and my baby, <laughs> my baby rolling pin that we're going to use to roll those biscuits out flat baby rolling pin for a baby elephant eel and my tongs to take them in and out of the oil with so i don't burn my little fingers no, we don't want chef to burn the little fingers. And, and you'll need a you'll need a couple of dishes: one to lay them on after to the take them over to your stove, and uh, one with the paper towel, which I already have laying over there. To when you take them out, you want to let them drain on the paper towel for just a moment before you butter them. And I will say about the oil, it's more like a half inch to an inch. Yeah, I usually you start with about a quarter, and then I add if I need to, because you can only get about two of these in a skillet at a time unless you really have a big massive skillet. So. Let me get everything set up and we'll get started. You're not going to pop the can on video? You want me to pop the can on video to scare Michelle? <laughs> we like to scare people when the can's popped. I thought you were going to put but the camera... But you got to do it. You want me to pop it? I thought you were going to put the camera back on me if you want to scare people. Oh, funny. Ha-ha. 
Oh man, it didn't pop. What? That's all right. That's a rip off. Can you see that? Let's watch, guys. Dun 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 I'm going to cut about half of the stick and put in to start with. And we're going to microwave that. Penguin's going to microwave Penguin's that. Penguin's going to microwave it for me. So we can get our butter nice and hot. <laughs> Spread that on these. Thank you very much. I'm sous chef for today. And then I got my little scooper I forgot to grab. And we're going to put a little bit of flour out there. Not all of our it. fur babies know that something good is being made because they're all lingering around. Yeah, it's like someone shooting off fireworks. They all come running. Speaking of which, people have been doing that already. Yeah, they have. But all you do is take the biscuit and lay it out. Sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top of it. It's kind of hard to sprinkle on this one. Take it's the your, operator. Take your rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a glass, you can use a pop can, you can use whatever you like. What, Poon? I know, you know Daddy's making something good. Yeah. Take it and roll it out, flip it over. Now, if you like bigger ones, you can add these together, just mush them together and then roll them out. Yeah. You want to get them about, oh. They'll keep trying to creep back up on you a little bit. Because of the density of the dough. About an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Right? About an eighth of an inch. Because it will puff up in the oil. Yeah. When you get them about that size, I sit and do that, get a little flour off of them, and then I lay them on a plate, get them ready. And roll out another one for you guys. And you can do Nutella on these. Oh, you yeah. can do chocolate, peanut butter and... Chocolate sauce. M&M's. Peanut butter and bananas. Your favorite combinations. Anything that you'd like to have. For me, I like peanut butter and bananas, but I already used my last banana, so I'm not getting that tonight. I wanted something raspberry-y. Yeah, and I got the purple fry, because I don't know what purple fry is. I've never had that before, so we're going to find out together what purple fry is. Hopefully it's not actually some kind of bug that they put in a jar. I don't think so. Which me and my brother, we were just talking about how people eat cicadas. That seems to be the delicacy right now. Of course, I'm not a cicada eater. There's two of them ready. I'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll the rest of them out. You guys don't need to watch me. You pretty much got the idea. You want to get your oil hot, turn it to about medium, about 325 to 350 degrees, and we'll be ready to go. I'll be right back. We're ready to beat the stove. Okay, guys, we're back. I got them all rolled out over here, as you can see. Skillet should just about be hot by now. We'll find out here. We'll try to put one in. Perfect. Yeah, it's sizzling. So like I said, you can combine more than one of them at a time if you like. Make them bigger, but I just like keeping them this size. It's about the perfect size. Eat two or three of them, you're usually pretty full. Especially if you're feeding kids. One of these is plenty for a kid. Yeah, small kid. Not our mm -hmm. kids, but... Well, they were growing boys. Yeah, well. Overgrowing boys. <laughs> Couldn't go out to eat unless you went to a buffet. Yeah, they get a love of food, honestly. <laughs> I like taking a little bit of the hot oil where there's, it's not got anything on it yet. We're still dry. Doing that makes it cook a little quicker. Now, I know uh, you can take a fork and poke if you want them not to be so fluffed up, but a real elephant here has got pockets in it of air. So I just like leaving them like the real thing. Yeah. But it takes about a minute aside or so. When you start getting that golden brown, yeah. then you know it's time to flip it. And if, if they're cooking, but they're not cooking fast enough, you can always add just a little bit more to your heat. Like I said, our, our dials don't tell you the exact temperature, just high, medium, and low, and in between. Right now, it's on about medium high. Yeah. But it doesn't take too long. Like I said, usually about a minute or so aside, flip them over. You're getting nice and puffy. So, so good. You can put chocolate sauce, M&M's, anything you want to. Yeah, see, I flipped that one a little bit soon. You see, it's still got some white there in the center. So we'll have to flip it back over in a minute. It's all right. Flip this back over here. Give it a little more time on that side. Yeah, I'd say that one's done, guys. You can see what that looks like. 
in here I got my big plate with my paper towel on it. We'll put it over there to drain a little bit of that grease off. This one still needs to go just another minute. And that one's done. Well, I'll get the rest of these cooked up and we'll show you guys how you top them. Okay guys, Chef's still frying, but like he told you, you can do them up any way you want to. So I want one with some raspberry on it, but first I'm gonna do a couple with the, the butter, the cinnamon, and the sugar. And they're very hot. So I'm just gonna put it on my plate. We've got our butter that's melted. I'm just gonna stir it up. And we're just gonna brush the butter on all over. A lot of times at the fair, what they'll do is they'll actually dunk them. They'll butter them, just pick them up with tongs and dunk them down in a butter bath. That's what they do before they sprinkle on the cinnamon and sugar. That way you've got butter all the way around. So we've got the butter on there good now. We're just gonna do a sprinkle with cinnamon and sugar. And you wanna be generous with your cinnamon and sugar. Yeah. If you go to a fair or a carnival, you know that they don't chintz on the, yeah. the cinnamon and sugar at all. And I want to give you guys a warning too. I went to a place a couple of years ago, they were having oh. a food <laughs> yeah. festival. And the guy said he had elephant ears for five bucks. Boy, don't they look good. There's our first one. He said he had them for five dollars. So I said, yeah, give me one. That was a joke. So he comes back a couple minutes yeah. later and it's a tortilla shell. A tortilla shell with he fried that puffed up just a little bit in some spots. Yeah. We're talking like a really thin wheat kind of tortilla shell. You know, like you can buy, I don't know. What, just a big burrito shell. Yeah, you, get, all like, it was. you get like eight for two bucks in a package. And he sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon sugar on it. Oh, I was so mad. Well, that's what I said too. I'm not a person who gets violent too often, but I felt like telling that guy where he could take that uh, damn... Uh, Elephant ear thing he made and stick it. That was just ripping somebody off is what they were doing. Yeah, that's all that is. Absolutely all they were doing. Okay, now I'm gonna take my hot one coming in. Powdered sugar in my sifter here. And I'm just gonna give it a good sifting of powdered sugar all over and everywhere else too. <sighs> Baby elephant ear coming that's in. That's not how you do it. It's that's how you do it. Here comes Poon. <laughs> Poon's like, what the heck's that noise, Mom? All right, we got a lot of powdered sugar on there now. And which sauce do we want to use? I want raspberry. That's not raspberry. We're going to use this one right here, raspberry and red currant. Going to mix this up a little bit. We've not tried any of these yet. Well, we've had some, but not any of these we're opening right now. So, I'm just going to spread me some all on there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Not like I need it, right guys? But, <sighs> you only live once. You only live once. Alright. That looks amazing right there, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to dive into it until... Oh, you go ahead. Until Chef's ready to... I got the last two cooking. I'll wait a few minutes. But like I said, if you're, if you're making these ahead or you're having a party and you're making a bunch, you can melt you some chocolate sauce, put it in a squirt bottle, or uh, jelly and jam, put it in a squirt bottle, and that way when you dust them, you can just squeeze it on out and you're all done. No spreading involved. You can do peanut butter the same way. You can nuke peanut butter for a few minutes. Melt it, put it in a squeeze bottle too, or a, a Ziploc bag. Doesn't that look so good? It's just a miniature version of what you're getting at the fair and the festivals. Yeah, and if you take like two or three biscuits and you actually mold them together, because I've did it before, you can get one that's like, and where's my hands? Almost at? elephant ear size. Yeah, almost elephant ear size. It depends on your skillet. So we're definitely, we have a few more very good, um, fair food recipes coming up yeah, so um, one of them that I make I haven't really seen anywhere else I've seen people try to do a similar version yeah, but not, but like, not like mine not so like but you know I'm different anyway yeah. not always in a good way am I different but I'm different <laughs> yeah. okay I'm gonna 
Go ahead and do another one right here on this plate. Probably use this plate to do our thumbnails, right? Probably. Yeah. Flip it over. Butter it up right here. Oh, yumma yumma. You gotta do a lot of butter. Just like we did when we did our festival corn, our Mexican street corn. Slather it with a lot of butter. Cinnamon and sugar. And yeah, every time you eat an elephant ear, there's always a waste of cinnamon and sugar, but we like to, when you split it open, take the, the open part and dip it in your cinnamon and sugar that's lingering around on your plate. Because that's really good to do too. Dumbo coming in for a landing. There she blows. We'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, there you go. We've made them three different ways here. We have butter with cinnamon sugar, butter with powdered sugar and jam, and we did this one with this butter and powdered sugar. But like I said, endless number of combinations, however you like them. I'm gonna see if I can break this one open right here. It's all buttery and cinnamon and sugary. You guys can see that pillow-like on the inside. Yes, yes, yes. As close as you're going to get to an elephant ear without making the dough or going to a carnivore fair and buying one. Mm-hmm. So good. Butter in both sides with real butter. And you don't even have to have a special occasion to have it. If you just decide you'd like some one morning for breakfast or something with some coffee, that go great with coffee. See how pillowy that is? And or it's tea. crispy on the outside. I don't know if you can hear this or not. I don't know where the speaker is. Isn't that terrible? The outsides are crispy. Inside, you're still soft. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm Very good, easy, fair food. Mm-mm-mm. Yep. We have plenty, guys. Come on over. You can top them with whipped cream and fruit if you like. I know I had one when I was a kid a long, long time ago somewhere. And they put apple butter, butter, then apple butter, and then they put like real thin slices of cooked apple on top of it. Oh, man. That was just delicious. Mm hmm But this tastes just like the one that we had at the... Well, you guys haven't seen that video yet. All right. We got one elephant ear at... Um, a fair that we went to recently right. and this tastes just as good as that probably better because it's not tough the one we have is kind of tough they're a little tough but not bad this has a perfect consistency mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, i'm starving i haven't eaten anything yet today so well get it i guess I just want to leave the camera on me as I sit and eat the rest of these. <laughs> you look tired. Well, Doesn't he look tired, guys? It's hot outside again. Yeah. Worked all day out in the sun. 90, I think it was 92 degrees or 93 today. I know, I cut grass and I weed eat it and I watered plants. And... Oh, hang on a second, guys. Hang on. I know I keep telling you guys about our blueberries and all our plants and stuff, but we have two raspberry plants I planted last year, too. I got them marked down at Walmart. They finally just started having their first few ripe red raspberries. There was five, but I ate two of them, so now there's only three. You should have heard the chef. I was on the phone, and he came in, and he was giving me the sign to pause for a minute. I thought, he, he asked me, he goes, are raspberries supposed to be red? <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I picked wild raspberries. Because he's used to seeing black raspberries. Yeah, wild ones. I'm like, no. And said, those are red raspberries. And yes, you have red raspberries now. <laughs> yeah, like I said, they're... And they were good. The, the two plants I got are just loaded with them. They're just starting to ripen just now, so... And, uh... I noticed out by our pond, there might be a few growing out there too wild, so... Mm-hmm. I might have to go out there one day and see if any of them are getting ripe. Laura Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie, she used to love to pick wild raspberries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got cherry tomatoes on. Like I said, there's like 18 of them growing. My, yeah. uh, my green onions have got about that tall now so far. The baby choy is really getting big, so. 
So if All you right. want a good fair food dessert, guys, just go to Walmart and grab you a can of these biscuits. I think they're what, like a dollar? Oh, they're probably less than a buck. Somewhere, somewhere around a dollar for these biscuits. The only other thing that's in it is your oil, your butter, and your sugar and cinnamon. Right. Very cheap, cheap, cheap dessert. Kids Tastes love like them. you got it from the fair. Yeah, kids love them. You say elephant ear and kids usually just go, oh, fair time. Yeah, fair food time. Okay, guys, we're going to go. Yeah. So chef can keep eating his uh, elephant ears. ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes food. All right, guys, we will see you in the next video. See you guys later. Bye, guys. Enjoy.